Hello students, welcome back to Easy B Tech channel and you are listening to the course of signals and systems. So we are in first chapter and we will be continuing the topic of classification of signals. In this video what we will be seeing is we will talk about what is called conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric signals and then we will talk about what is called conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric parts of a signal. So they look similar to the even signal and odd signal and also the even part and odd part of a signal but here what happens is that that signal can be complex also here we assume that signals are complex okay so let's jump into the topic so first we will talk about conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric signals okay so how do we define the conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric signals and and for continuous time case there it is defined as x star of minus t is equal to x of t means what you have to replace time t with minus t and then you should take conjugation of the signal so usually we assume that here the signal is complex okay so few examples include for continuous time case it is e power j omega naught t1 plus jt and again as i said we can have infinite number of examples even for discrete time case also we can have infinite number of examples so just to understand this concept so let us take examples for both the cases so for a continuous time case let us take our x of t to be equal to this one okay which is 1 plus jt so let us check whether this is a conjugate symmetric signal or not so what is the first thing we have to do we let us take x of minus t so x of minus t means what wherever there is t you have to replace with minus t so you get 1 minus jt then what is that we have to do we should take conjugation of x of minus t so x star of minus t would be equal to how much so this is looking like a minus ib so if you take conjugation you get to 1 plus jt and clearly what is 1 plus jt here that is nothing but our original signal x of t so what is that you understood you understood that the signal x of t which is 1 plus jt satisfies this condition x star of minus t equal to x of t and hence that given signal is a conjugate symmetric signal so here also we will take an example let us take x of n to be equal to n square plus j times sine of pi n cube by 12 okay so let us check whether this signal is a conjugate symmetric signal or not so note that you can take conjugation first and then replace n with minus n or you can replace n with minus n and then take conjugation so both the things will give you the same result so but let us follow the procedure as we have done for continuous time case so what is that first we will replace n with minus n so you will get minus n whole square which is n square and here you get sine of pi times minus n whole cube which is again minus n cube so sine of minus pi n cube would be minus sine pi n cube by 12 okay so that would be our x of minus n so in between one step i skip because that's easy so then what is that we have to do we should take conjugation of x of minus n so again this is looking like a minus jb and hence conjugation would be n square so minus j will become plus j sine of pi times n cube by 12 so clearly we know we have we see that n square plus j times sine pi n cube by 12 is nothing but our original signal x of n and from this again we see that the given example x of n satisfies this condition and hence that is a conjugate symmetric signal okay right so one important property of a conjugate symmetric signal is that its real part is even and its imaginary part is odd. So before we prove this result, so as I said before, our original signal x of t is complex and hence we can write this as real part xr of t 
plus j times imaginary part xi of t okay so for example if you have any complex number z okay so i'll write here just to save space so z is a complex number so if once i say a complex number that can be written as a plus i b correct in a similar fashion if x of t is a complex signal we can write it as imaginary real part xr of t plus j times imaginary part xi of t similar to this here a is real part of z and b is imaginary part of z okay so with that let us directly jump into proof of this result okay so because the signal is given to be conjugate symmetric so we should find out what will be x star of minus t so first we will try what will be x of minus t so x of minus t would be equal to let us substitute in this equation so you will get x r of minus t where we replaced t with minus t plus j times xi of minus t okay then we should take conjugation you get x star of minus t that should be equal to what is this here this is again looking like some c plus id so if you take conjugation the c will remain as it is okay and because you have plus j times xi of t that flow will become minus j times xi of minus t so x star of minus t equal to this okay but what is given the signal is given to be what conjugate symmetric so because it is a conjugate symmetric signal x star of minus t would be equal to x of t so let us substitute this one and this one in this equation so x star of minus t would be x r of minus t minus j times x i of minus t and that should be equal to x of t which is nothing but x r of t plus j times x i of t okay so what is that we have to do as a next step so because these two are equal let us equate real and imaginary part so what do you get so if you take if you equate real parts you get xr of minus t will be equal to xr of t so what does this mean we have already seen in previous lecture that if you have something like in this any signal if it satisfies this property we call that signal to be even and hence this tells us that the real part of the conjugate symmetric signal is even and if you equate imaginary part so what do you get you get xi of minus t to be equal to minus xi of t okay and this under any signal which satisfies this property we call it as odd signal so what is it we have seen we have seen that for a conjugate symmetric signal real part is even and imaginary part is odd so this is the way how we prove these two this important properties same rule applies for discrete time case also okay so we just replace t with n and x of t with x of n okay right okay so then what is a conjugate anti-symmetric signal so again a signal x of t is said to be conjugate symmetric if it satisfies the given condition so what is that x star of minus t is equal to minus x of t and for discrete time case same rule applies what is that x star of minus n should be equal to x of minus x of n and the examples are listed down so x of t equal to for continuous time case x of t equal to j times e power j omega naught t t plus j mod t and so on okay like that we have infinite number of possible examples and even for discrete time case also this is one example but we can have again infinite number of examples okay right so let us try to uh, understand this concept with by taking this example so let us try to check whether that signal which is underlined here is a conjugate anti-symmetric signal or not okay so we will take x of t to be what t plus 
j times modulus of t so what is the first thing we have to do we have to replace t with minus t so here we have t so that fellow will become minus t plus j times here also we have t if we take modulus of minus t that is same as modulus of t okay so x of minus t would be equal to minus t plus j times modulus of t and what is the next step we have to do we should take conjugation of this so you again this is looking like a plus i a, a j b or i b so you will get if you take conjugation you will get minus t and plus j will become minus j times modulus of t but you can easily see that if you take minus out you will get t plus j times modulus of t which is nothing but our original signal x of t and hence what is that we have seen we have seen that the given signal satisfies this condition what is that x star of minus t equal to minus x of t and hence we say that that signal is a conjugate anti-symmetric signal so here also we will try to check this so let us take x of n to be equal to n time n plus j times cos of pi n by 12 so what is the first step we should take x of minus n so definitely that would be equal to minus n plus j times if we replace n with minus n you will get cos of minus pi n by 12 which is same as cos of pi n by 12 okay so that is our x of minus n so what is next thing we have to do we should take conjugation of this so that turns out to be again this is looking like a plus j b so you take conjugation you will get a so plus j b will become minus j times cos pi n by 12 okay and again if you take minus out you will get minus of n plus j times cos pi n by 12 which is nothing but our original signal x of n so what is that you have seen you have seen that x the given signal x of n satisfies this property what is that x star of minus n equal to minus x of n so that implies the given signal is a conjugate anti-symmetric signal okay right so just like we have seen for a conjugate symmetric signal few properties here also we will see that for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal real part is odd and imaginary part is even for a conjugate symmetric signal what is the property so real part is even and imaginary part is odd for for conjugate anti-symmetric signal real part would be odd and imaginary part is even okay how do you prove that so signal is given to be what conjugate anti-symmetric signal and as usual we assume that our signal is what complex and hence what is the first step we have to write our x of t as real part xr of t plus j times imaginary part xi of t so then what is that we have to find out we have to find out first x of minus t which is nothing but we have to substitute in this equation you will get xr of minus t plus j times xi of minus t so then we should take conjugation so these things are similar to what we have seen for the conjugate symmetric signal so that same thing repeats so if you take conjugation you will get xr of minus t so this plus j will become minus j times xi of minus t so for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal what is the requirement x star of i'll write down that for conjugate anti-symmetric signal we need x star of minus t to be equal to minus x of t okay so let us substitute these things in this equation so x star of minus t we got that to be what xr of minus t minus j times xi of minus t and that is equal to minus x of t so minus x of t would be equal to xr of t plus j times xi of t so now again by equating real and imaginary parts what do you get so you get xr of minus t 
to be equal to minus xr of t so what does this tell you this tells us that any signal which satisfies this property is nothing but an odd signal okay and hence what do we say so for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal its real part is odd again if you equate imaginary parts what will happen we get xi of minus t to be equal to xi of t and again any signal which satisfies this property we call that as an even signal so what is that we have found out we have found out that for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal real part is odd and its imaginary part is even for conjugate symmetric signal it is the reverse what is that for a conjugate symmetric signal the real part is even and imaginary part is odd for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal real part is odd and its imaginary part is even okay right it's the same thing applies for discrete time case also exactly the same process we can repeat and hence i am not giving the proof here okay right next some of the important properties of conjugate symmetric signal are first one so for a con for both the things we will check so for a conjugate symmetric signal the value at origin is real okay so what do i mean by that okay so let us take an example for discrete time case okay because previously we focused mostly on continuous time case for this one let us focus on discrete time case so what does it mean a signal is conjugate symmetric and hence what condition it has to satisfy x star of minus n should be equal to x of n but we want the value at where so we want the value at origin means we have to replace n with zero so if you replace n with zero what do you get x star of minus zero which is same as zero is equal to x of zero what is that it mean what does it mean it means that the signals conjugate the value of a va f conjugation is equal to the number itself the numbers conjugation equal to the number itself that implies that number should be real so this implies x of 0 is real okay x of 0 is real okay right that is the same rule applies for continuous time case also for a continuous time signal if it is conjugate symmetric the value at origin is always real okay and what is the second property for conjugate anti-symmetric signal its value at origin is imaginary again we will take a discrete time example so signal is given to be conjugate anti-symmetric means what x star of minus n should be equal to minus x of n and we want the value at where at origin so what is that we have to do we have to replace n with zero so if you replace n with zero we get x star of zero is equal to minus x of zero so what does this say your a numbers conjugation is equal to negative of that number so this implies what this implies that number x of 0 should be imaginary okay so that x of 0 is imaginary okay any number which satisfies this condition what is that numbers conjugation if it is negative of that number then that number should be imaginary okay so in that way what is that we have seen for a conjugate previously we have seen that for a conjugate symmetric signal the value at origin is real and for a conjugate anti-symmetric signal the value at origin is imaginary okay right and one of the important properties uh, of the conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric signals is if you add two conjugate symmetric signals the resulting signal is also conjugate symmetric so this is similar to what we have seen for even and odd signals if you add two even signals we get an even signal similarly here if you add two conjugate symmetric signals we get a conjugate symmetric signal so i'll just give the proof for this first property so what is given we are given with two signals x1 of t and x2 of t and they are given to be conjugate symmetric and hence let us uh, and hence what is that they have what is the condition they have to satisfy x1 star of minus t should be equal to x1 of t and we will take second signal x2 of t that is also conjugate symmetric and hence x2 star of minus t is equal to 
x2 of t now let us take addition of signals correct that is what they want we want sum of conjugate symmetric signals that is x3 of t which is x1 of t plus x2 of t so now we have to check whether this x3 of t is again conjugate symmetric or not so what is that we have to find out we have to find out x3 of minus t which would be equal to x1 of minus t plus x2 of minus t now what is the next step we have to take the conjugation okay so you have x3 star of minus t that should be equal to this is a real uh, this is uh, looking like z1 plus z2 so if you take conjugation that fellow should become z1 star plus z2 star so instead of z2 we have x2 so we will get x2 star of minus t okay but we know that x1 star of minus t is nothing but x1 of t and x2 star of minus t is nothing but x2 of t so let us substitute those two results so you get x star of minus x3 star of minus t equal to x1 of t plus x2 of t but we know that x1 of t plus x2 of t is nothing but our signal x3 of t so what is that we have proved we have proved that x3 star of minus t is equal to x3 of t means what x3 of t is a conjugate symmetric signal so what but what is x3 of t x3 of t is nothing but summation of conjugate symmetric signals and that is also turning out to be again conjugate symmetric signal in that way we can prove that if you add two conjugate symmetric signals the resulting signal is also conjugate symmetric okay same rule applies again for discrete time case exactly same steps repeats except that notation changes and hence let's not see that here in the class so you can take that as homework okay so prove this result for through this result for discrete time case okay so prove this result for discrete time case so that we will take it as homework okay what is the next property so summation of conjugate anti-symmetric signals is again conjugate anti-symmetric signal so you proceed exactly in a similar fashion what we have done in the previous slide and try to prove this result so this i will give it as homework so you take two signals x1 of t and x2 of t which are conjugate anti-symmetric and you add them and then take the and you proceed the in the steps which we have given in the previous slide and accordingly you can prove that summation of two conjugate anti-symmetric signals is a conjugate anti-symmetric signal now what happens if you add a conjugate symmetric signal and a conjugate anti-symmetric signal so what happens is that the resulting signal is neither conjugate symmetric nor a conjugate anti-symmetric signal so let us prove that third property here okay so what is given x well, we will take two signals right so first signal should be conjugate and this conjugate symmetric means what x1 star of minus t should be equal to x1 of t and second signal let us take that to be conjugate anti-symmetric means what x2 x2 star of minus t should be equal to minus x2 of t now let us consider the addition of these two signals x3 of t equal to x1 of t plus x2 of t okay now we will follow the procedure what is that we want to find x3 of minus t which is nothing but x1 of minus t plus x2 of minus t okay and now you take conjugation of this you get x star of minus t is equal to x1 star of minus t plus x2 star of minus t but what is x1 star of minus t so that is our x1 of t and what is x2 star of minus t that is minus x2 of t so definitely what do we say so this is not equal to x3 of t and again this is not equal to minus x3 of t also and hence what do we say if you add two con if you add conjugate symmetric signal and a conjugate anti-symmetric signal what happens the resulting signal is neither conjugate symmetric nor conjugate anti-symmetric okay so though i have proved these results for continuous time case same exactly the same steps can be followed to prove the result for a 
discrete time case okay right so what happens to the product okay if you have if you multiply two conjugate symmetric signals the resulting signal is also conjugate symmetric signal so we let us prove this by taking the example by taking discrete time signal so again we have two signals which are conjugate symmetric it definitely it means that x1 star of minus n should be equal to x1 of n so we are taking two signals x1 of n and x2 of n so they satisfy conjugate symmetric property and hence what can we write we can write x1 star of minus n equal to x1 of n and similarly second signal is also conjugate symmetric and hence x2 star of n is equal to x2 of n now let us multiply these two signals and let us call that to be x3 of n so which is nothing but x1 of n multiplied with x2 of n okay so we want to check whether x3 of n is conjugate symmetric or not so what is this procedure first we replace n with minus n so you get x3 of minus n to be equal to x1 of minus n multiplied with x2 of minus n then we have to take conjugation for x3 of minus n so you get x3 of minus n star so again this is looking like z1 times z2 so if you take conjugation you should get z1 star which is x1 star of minus n multiplied with z2 star which is nothing but x2 star of minus n okay so what do we get so x3 star of minus n would be equal to Ah, because x1 of n is a conjugate symmetric signal we can replace x1 star of minus n with x1 of n and x2 of n is also conjugate symmetric and hence we can replace x2 star of minus n with x2 of n okay right so but we know that x1 of n multiplied with x2 of n is what x3 of n so what is that we have proved we have proved that x3 of n is a conjugate symmetric signal but what is x3 of n it is the product of signals x1 of n and x2 of n but what are those signals they are conjugate symmetric signal so what is that we have proved if you multiply two conjugate symmetric signals the resulting signal is also conjugate symmetric okay right so in a similar fashion you can prove that if you multiply two conjugate anti-symmetric signals we will get a conjugate symmetric signal so as usual i will give this problem as homework okay so take two signals x1 of n and x2 of n which are conjugate anti-symmetric and accordingly you try to check whether the product is conjugate symmetric or not okay yes the next property so if you multiply a conjugate symmetric signal and a conjugate anti-symmetric signal the resulting signal is again conjugate anti-symmetric so let us prove that result here okay so first signal is let us take that to be conjugate symmetric that x1 of n that is x1 star of minus n should be equal to x1 of n and second signal x2 of n let us take that to be conjugate anti-symmetric so what will happen x2 star of minus n should be equal to minus x2 of n now let us consider the product x3 of n which is nothing but x1 of n multiplied with x2 of n so what is that we have to check what happens to x3 of n whether it is conjugate symmetric or conjugate anti-symmetric so for that what is that we have to do we have to find out x3 star of minus n so first step would be we have to find out x3 of n which is nothing but x1 of minus n multiplied with x2 of minus n then we have to take that fellow's conjugation which is x3 star of minus n which would be equal to x1 star of minus n multiplied with x2 star of minus n but what is x1 star of minus n that is equal to x1 of n and what is x2 star of minus n that is equal to 
minus x2 of n so i'll just uh, write like this that minus i will bring out so that would be equal to minus x2 of n right x2 star of minus n is nothing but minus x2 of n but x1 of n multiplied with x2 of n is nothing but our x3 of n so finally we write this as minus x3 of n so what is that we have got we have got that x3 is x3 of n is a conjugate anti-symmetric signal but what is x3 of n x3 of n is nothing but product of which signals conjugate symmetric which is x1 of n and conjugate anti-symmetric signal x2 of n so if you multiply conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric signal what happens we get a conjugate anti-symmetric signal okay right so that is these are the few properties of conjugate symmetric and conjugate anti-symmetric signals okay thank you